Hi, now we're going to look a little bit more in detail at the hormones of birth. So as mentioned earlier, labouring in a birth pool can increase both the oxytocin hormone and endorphins that are really, really important for birth. Um, which might be why there's that evidence of water birth helping to shorten labour. So let's look at these hormones in a little bit more detail. So oxytocin hormone is our hormone of love and it's the wonderful hormone that creates the tightenings uh, and contractions in the birthing body. So I'm going to imagine that this is a uterus muscle. So the uterus muscle is a big muscle uh, all surrounding the baby and this uh, muscle needs to contract. Contractions bring an opening to the cervix at the base to let the baby out. So we're going to have a little think about this. This cervix is quite thick and long so uh, we're going to think about how the contractions open the cervix and how that works in the body. So in the first stage of labour, contractions uh, move the cervix upwards. I'm going to show you what that looks like with this balloon. So contractions are surges or tightenings of the uterus muscle, moving the muscle fibres up. In fact, we have round fibres going around in a circular way and over the top we have long muscle fibres. And it's the long muscle fibres pulling up the circular ones that pull back the cervix. And we can see this here with this balloon pulling up. And sometimes the first stage of labour, these contractions and tightenings do feel like they are moving the body upwards and pulling upwards on the uterus. So that's how the cervix we can see here is thinned and then starts to open uh, and opening that cervix around. And we get a thicker layer, and we can see that with the darker part of the balloon on the top. We get a thicker layer building up at the top of the uterus. So that is our first stage of labour. And during the second stage of labour, there is a much thicker band of muscle fibres on top of the uterus. So these contractions feel like the woman is pushing down or bearing her baby down. So those feel like they are going downwards and we sometimes call these down contractions. And that helps the baby push down and out of her body. So that is how uh, contractions help to birth your baby. So what else do we know about oxytocin hormone? Well, we know that it's a very shy hormone, that it doesn't like people. And actually there are three times in our lives when it comes into place. During sex, during birth, and during feeding. Um, the human brain needs to be in a very primitive state to produce optimum amounts of oxytocin. So I'm going to show you what this looks like uh, with these balloons. So this is oxytocin hormone in the woman's body. And if she is uh, relaxed and calm, that will build up in her body and a, a large amount of oxytocin will be produced to create those lovely surges and contractions. So in the middle of the brain, we have a part called the amygdala. And the amygdala is like our eye. It's spotting out and looking for danger. And when it senses any danger or fear uh, or threat, it will fire up and send a shot of adrenaline to the body. So this is my adrenaline hormone. And this builds up getting the person ready to fight or to flee and run away. So this acts on the body, it stimulates the muscles to work, the heart to race faster. It can take uh, the oxygen away from the uterus to the arms and leg muscles. And this can be switched on even simply by uh, a stranger coming into the room or bright lights or even the journey to hospital in the car. Um, we hear uh, stories of, of women getting to hospital because uh, they've had a boost of adrenaline. What we know about the body is the oxytocin, when this comes up, will slowly go down. Because the body can't produce adrenaline 
and oxytocin at the same time. So when there is a danger or a fear, the adrenaline comes up and the oxytocin comes down. And this is often caused by a change in environment or a change in a stressful situation. So crucial factors that keep her producing oxytocin and lowering her adrenaline and getting that right down are going to be her feeling safe, relaxed, uh, unobserved and totally safe with who she's with. And that's going to build up. the oxytocin again in her body for labour to work well and contractions to work. The other uh, hormone that comes with the oxytocin is something called endorphins. And endorphins are produced when a woman produces lots of oxytocin. And these are the natural painkillers in the body. These will uh, build up during labour and they help on the opiate receptors in the body to reduce any pain sensations. And in fact, a woman can produce so much endorphins in her body, they can work better than an opiate injection, which is amazing. So what's this all got to do with water birth? Well, like we've highlighted before, women will feel hidden and private in water. So that's going to boost her oxytocin because remember, it's quite shy. The body being immersed in water adds to that feeling of being safe and unobserved. Also, there is a, a surrounding of water and the birth pool, giving added layers of protection, feeling like the woman is in a nest and surrounded with safety around her. The warmth penetrating her muscles will also give her a boost of endorphins as well, which will help with her pain relief. So when water birth is also combined with lovely deep breathing, this can really boost her oxytocin even further. So water birth really does boost the hormones of labor and birth.